Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Joshua Furs with CombatInsiders.com. We are here with the executioner himself, Mr. Joey Beltran. What's going on, my friend? Um, you know, uh, adjusting to the new normal, uh, trying to deal with life on my turn. Well, you know, man, talk about it because um, I, I hate that it's even a topic to discuss but you know like you said it, it is what it is this is a, the times that we're in man how is um how is it affecting you you know locally where you're at you're over in cali how is it affecting you over there how is it affecting your everyday life your training you know tell us what your day-to-day -day life is now since all this stuff happened yeah so we went uh me and my girlfriend and the uh a whole group of the amateur fighters that we that we trained from over at 10th Planet Oceanside. We had a girl that was fighting on March 14th, right? And uh, we were in communication with the promoter uh, for Tough Enough. We drove, we rented a van, we got all the way out there, fucking checked into the room. The girl weighed in, and then that night, we were chilling at the Spearmint Rhino. Literally at 10 o'clock at night, we get the fucking text that the show got canceled. Wow. So that was that was a pain in the ass. That started off Corona off to a, off to a good start. Um, and then basically, like, uh, we came back to San Diego, and it was just like, I worked one more day at UFC gym in Oceanside, and it was, like, weird. They had all these rules. They were, like, counting people at the door, and I was like... <laughs> This is silly. Like, why don't they just shut it down? And then, like, the next day, they shut everything down. Yeah. Um, and so that was on the 16th. And ever since then, yeah, man, I, I, I haven't been working. I love my job. I love I love teaching over there. And, and then, um, you know, and everything with, uh, with BKFC has been basically up in limbo. Sure. You know, and I get it, man. Nobody really knows. Nobody has answers to what's going on. So... I know it's not nothing personally against me. It's just <laughs> fuck, man. We're all kind of sitting here with our hands in the air, like, well, what do we do now? Yeah. Yeah. How, how is um, how's it affected your your, your training? I mean, I, I know a lot of people are just kind of like making do with, you know, things they got around them and doing more outdoor, outdoorsy stuff. So, like, how has that part affected you? Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, it's very much similar to me just lots of running um i got a good friend of mine who has a a really good home gym that i'm that i'm able to use like he's got an assault bike and a rower so i'm pretty set on that and um you know yeah man the other thing that sucks is a like holding getting somebody to hold mitts for me i get it now right everybody's kind of spooked my main coach he has a brand new baby like just a couple months okay i don't expect him to hold mitts for me um you know, and, and so right. it's just, just sucks, just sucks, you know, sparring and everything like that. But as far as like cardio and all that other shit, running stairs, run lots of, lots, lots of cardio. <laughs> so I'm definitely, yeah. you know, I know when this, when this ends, there's going to be people that need to get ready and there's going to be people that are fucking ready. And I'm, I plan on being one of those. I know, um, I, I, I think we chatted before that. We both enjoy a good conspiracy theory, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, <laughs> what What do you uh, do? You have any thoughts on the stuff that's going on, man? Like, I, I know a lot of people have said, you know, there's information coming from all different angles, man. Like, you know, news is telling us one thing, and then a doctor's telling us this, and ten different doctors are telling us that, and then, you know, just all this stuff is coming from many, uh, you know, different angles. I guess is as 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 deep as you want to delve into it but i just out of sheer curiosity what are your thoughts on this you know just as a whole man like what do you think do you think it's uh you know they're talking about how this stuff was you know released over in wuhan by their version of cdc over there that all this stuff was man-made that all this you know just all like what, what are your thoughts on it man like what do you think let's let, let's chat um, let's talk shop let's chat shit about it you know, uh, I'll always start off by saying this. 
I'm not, I'm not political at all. Um, I think, I think I, I watch politics as a form of entertainment, as a form of entertainment. Yeah. I think it's a lot of, it's just fucking silly that these are grown men that are in charge, grown men and women that are in charge. And then they're, they're out there like fighting, like, like little kids, like high schoolers. Um, uh, you know, long time ago, many, many moons ago, I got a chance to vote for one election. I had an opportunity to vote one election. That was Al Gore and George Bush. And I voted for Al Gore because just grew up poor and the whole year, you just kind of like have it indoctrinated that you're supposed to be a Democrat because mm. I'm, that's just kind of like, you know, so I voted for Al Gore mm. and that's what we learned about the electoral college with all the shenanigans that went on with George Bush. Yep. They had to do the recount in the in Florida the flipping chat. Yeah. Or yeah. That's when I really learned that like our vote really doesn't fucking matter because at the end of the day, they can win the popular vote. Uh, but the electoral college can just overrule it. Right. So then moving forward, I ended up getting in trouble when I was 19 and got a felony and I never been able to vote ever since, but I never really missed it because the one time I did vote, I learned that my vote really didn't matter. Right. I mean, it's kind of my personal experience. So this whole thing with like Trump and everything and like, you're like, once again, I'm just speaking just from my viewpoint. I'm not saying follow my views, but. Like the whole thing about Trump being racist and all that stuff and all this, all talking all this shit about Mexicans and stuff like that. I'm like, you mean to tell me you really think that Trump was the first president who's racist or the first president who used racial slurs? Like, I doubt that. I think just Trump's just a fucking dumb. Like he's just like a he's like a meathead. He just right. like says what is But once again, that's like the selling point on Trump. Like we don't we want a normal person. We don't want a politician. I heard that over and over and over again. He says what he feels. He shoot, he's a straight shooter. And so, you know, whatever. I don't know. We could go on for days and days. But but anyways, my viewpoint on Corona, I don't really think, I mean, obviously coronavirus is real and people are getting sick and people are dying. Right. right. But I just think for some, like there's something bigger. There's a grander scheme of things. Like why is the media just fucking sensationalizing it? The amount of people that die. And now if you look at that, like, I, go, I live in Southern California, man. I hear about people getting shot, people getting OD, people o- overdosing and getting found in the local parks, like all kinds of shit like that. Like, I haven't heard any of that. So you mean to tell me like coronavirus is here and now people aren't getting shot, people aren't getting robbed, people aren't dying in the hospital, people aren't overdosing from heroin now? Like, right. All right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's all about like, the story that the, that the media wants to portray. Yeah, and right now that they're they're getting on the coronavirus, and my conspiracy theory, and I'll just leave it at this, is that they just they they want so badly for Trump to lose that they just have to fucking shit tank the the economy because it was rocking and rolling, and and the economy was the best that it's been in years. The unemployment rate was like at its lowest point, and all these good things were happening, regardless of what you feel about Trump personally. Like you can't deny facts; numbers right. don't lie. Wins and losses don't lie. And, and, and that's, that's what I think was happening. And so I don't know, man, or it could be on the other side. This, this is the most deadliest thing we've ever encountered. It's going to be the new black plague and we're all going to die. I really hope that, I really hope it's a conspiracy theory because that's a little more comforting than this, the deadliest virus we've ever encountered and we're going to die. I like it, but sometimes I, I was reading, I was, I was going over some stuff in the internet because we have nothing but time and how it says like, Conspiracy theorists often find comfort in their wild, crazy conspiracies because it's like it's easy to lean on something like that than than on the harsh reality. Like this world fucking kind of sucks. This world is. <laughs> <laughs> you, so, you know, I hope it's a conspiracy and it's not that we're all gonna die from Corona. Yeah, you know where I I kind of hold uh, my laurels, man. Is uh, I always find that the truth is somewhere in the middle, right? Like I'll. I always, you know, you got, again, like you said, media, they sensationalize things. And then you have people on the opposite end who are the other extreme, right? Where they don't take it seriously enough. And it's like the truth is often somewhere kind of in the middle. And um, it's weird, right? Because I was reading some stuff, too, that, you know, a lot of doctors have been coming out and they're trying to purposely hike up the numbers for coronavirus, right? Because they're saying that they're counting, you know, people who die from regular flu, not coronavirus, but just regular flu or just other ailments that have nothing to do with COVID-19, 
but they're yeah. they're reporting it as coronavirus because they want the highest numbers possible. Like you said, you know, there's a lot of talk of they're going to use this as ammunition for the election, which I, I, it's hard for people to hear that and I think accept that and they end up throwing it back at, you know, someone like our face and like, oh, that's just a conspiracy theory. Yeah, well, I mean, really think about it. If you really thought about it, you really thought about it. It, 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 it makes a lot of sense, and it's pretty shitty. It's a pretty shitty realization that you have one completely one side of the country that is willing to do that, you know, and use the media and build up these numbers in a negative way just to try to get back at, you know, at Trump. And, like, I'm not the biggest Trump fan. You know, like, I, I call him out just like anybody else, but, like, it, it's it's pretty it's pretty sad and it's pretty obvious in my eyes that that's what's going on, you know. I, I um I don't I don't understand it. I don't, I don't think I ever will. I don't know what happened other than you know it's just they hate Trump. The left hates Trump. That's it. They're gonna do anything they can to get him out. They tried the, you know what they they Russia probe and you know Russia Gate and then they tried uh you know this the impeachment shit, nothing stuck. So they're just going to keep going and going and going and going and going until something finally sticks. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> weird, man. It's weird. It's, 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 it's sad times. It's sad times. And, um, you know, and, and I get what you're saying. You know, a lot of people like conspiracy people find comfort in that, but let me tell you what, I don't find comfort in that. I don't find comfort. <laughs> I think half the country is you know has a target you know there's a target painted on trump's back and they want him so bad that they're willing to fudge numbers on something that really shouldn't be fudged because yeah what they're doing is scaring the shit out of people like if they're fudging the numbers let's say if let's say if reality is i mean one death is bad enough so i like i said i'm not trying to downplay i know this is a real thing and i know it's you know it's it's making people very sick and dying from it. So first off, like I'm not downplaying that side of it, but let's just say the real number is you know two deaths in one day. That's the real number, but really they're saying like 50, and it's freaking people the fuck out even more than it would be if it was just two. And they keep hiking up these numbers, and next thing you know, people are you know buying 80 fucking rolls of toilet paper and and. 80,000 yeah. cases of water and they're lining up at the grocery store and they're this and that, this and that, this and that, this and that. I don't know, man. I don't yeah. mean to go off on a tangent on that. It's just... Um, oh, no. Hey, guys, why, we'd be silly to not talk about it. it. It's sad that we have to have these kind of conversations because... my. I mean, think about this, man. A month ago, me and you were talking. You were gearing up for this fight with God Beer. Matter of fact, it's supposed to happen tomorrow, right? Yeah. You were gearing up for this fight. It almost feels like another lifetime a month ago, right? It almost feels like it was another lifetime ago since all this stuff started happening. Yeah, it sucks. It's fucking really heartbreaking. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Once again, like, if I didn't have, if I didn't have, like, my weekly check-ins with, with, with my performance coach, my mental coach, it's like, dude, I would, I would, yeah. yeah you, there's every, there's every reason to go off, go off the, go off your rocker, and you know, and like, it sucks. There's a lot of, there's a lot, yeah. But it's like everybody's, everybody's hurting, everybody's hurting, uh, yeah. with the exception, I'm sure, like. But I mean, like, I, mean, I would say maybe like rich people, but even rich people aren't allowed to go in public right now. Right. So maybe they can like build a little makeshift nightclub in their house or something like that. But like, I don't know. This is like everybody. This sucks for everybody right now. Hey, let, well, let me ask you something because I'm on the East Coast. I'm in Virginia, right? So, how exactly are you guys under like mandatory lockdown over there? Like you can't leave your house, kind of thing, or like how does it work over there? It's yeah. I remember like the first day, like when they announced it on a Sunday, and then like that monday the next monday i was like okay like i like geared up i was like okay i'm gonna go out to the grocery store like you're yeah. like all pumped up and I'm like oh man i hit the streets i was like i thought this looked like a fucking normal monday like there's a lot of people out still 
it yeah. wasn't re- it wasn't until like I would say like two weeks in that you started really seeing like the traffic died down and everybody like there's a lot less people out on the street. So we are have the stay at home order, I believe that's what it's called. So basically yeah, yeah. we're only allowed we're only allowed we're supposed to only go out for essentials and stuff like that. And yeah. And uh you know, me personally, like my student loan uh that got I got the email that that stuff, those payments are not going to be automatic debited anymore. Those that got suspended until September, you know, my, my uh, landlord, she uh, told me April was cool. We'll reconvene for, for May. I was like, all right, well, that's good. Yeah. And it's like, this thing is like sucks. It's like everything was about to, everything was about to re up. Like for me personally, like, and, and for all my fighters out there know, like when you get like, you go like six months in between fighting. You're like, ah, you, even if you're good at saving money, like, dude, man, like, you know, it doesn't really stretch that far. And then I'm like, but mentally, I'm like, it's all right. We're re-upping. We're going to come up on like 40, 50 G's this next month. It's going to be good. Life's going to be good. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's keep pushing, keep pushing. And then boom, this fucking shit hit. Yeah. So that sucks. But it's just. It's about adjusting. It's like, hey, man, I, I grew up poor. This is nothing. This is nothing new to me. I know how to live lean. I know how to, <laughs> you know, I know how to just deal with the essentials and, you know, just, just, for me, it's a lot about, about the, um, you know, just the boredom, and and uh, being in my own head. That can be a real dangerous place for somebody like me, um, you know. So just definitely got to stay busy, stay on the phone, talk to a lot of people. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you know, it's like upstairs, upstairs in my head by myself. That's like being a little kid going to the attic. You don't ever really want to go to the attic by yourself. Right. So I (laughs) got to, I got to stay out of my own head. So you put out a, a video, which you have now since deleted and you talked about it. Um, we saw, (laughs) (laughs) we saw Shannon Briggs call out Mark Godbeer. And, you know, Mark Godbeer, Mark responded, and they had a little back and forth on social media, blah, 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 right? And then you put out your video, and essentially what I assume, maybe you talk about it. I don't want to assume anything, actually, but it seemed like you felt, did you feel slighted? Did you feel pissed off that maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, part of me is just boredom. Part of me wanted for, like, and I waited, like, a couple days. Like, I was like whatever these fucking idiots let them yap at each other on the internet and then like i was just kind of like bored feeling some type of way at my house and i was like i've been a fan of professional wrestling long enough i know how to do this yeah and i just basically just cut a just cut a promo on them you know <laughs> dramatic pauses and everything i was really proud of that video but then after watching i was like i like that goes against like so much of uh, shit that i always say like don't it's like just do do your talking with your fists, you know. But basically, like what happened was, it's like you said, Shannon Briggs was signed. It was like a big hoopla by Bare Knuckle. Even though, here's my opinion on the Shannon Briggs thing. Shannon Briggs, you could put him in the same category as that Iranian Hulk guy. Like, oh, great, you signed him. Is he actually ever gonna fight? Until you fight, like, shut up. You know, like. Until you have a signed contract with somebody, you have a date, and we or any of us have a date, like I get it. But then I also understand like Mark is like social media, and even though I don't do it, maybe I shouldn't be so judgy on people that they like to do it and they like to stay relevant and maybe they have their own um you know, personal needs, their desires to have their ego stroked, or whatever the fucking case may be, or their followers and put out content, whatever, whatever. But regardless, what happened was is he put out a video, called out. He got signed. And he put out a video calling out Mark Godbeer, which to me was I just thought was silly. Your whole motto is let's go. Yeah. What? Why would you call? And then some more little back and forth. And I was like, whatever, man. Mark Godbeer, you already have a fight deal with me, like. You, you think you're going to get past me and they go on right off into the sunset and fight Shannon Briggs. You're fucking, you got your fools mixed up, pal. And, um, so that's all. I did the video and woke up and I got the response from Mark Godbeer on Facebook. I got the response from 
Shannon Briggs on, on Instagram. And then I was like, all right, that's enough. I don't need to. I saw it like in a matter of eight hours. So I was like, all right, that's good. I don't need to have this, uh, uh, you know, negativity on my page. So I just put out another video. Basically, like, long story short, like, yeah, man, if we're going to fight eventually. And it's going to be like the rawest form of fighting. And I know Mark's done it before, but, you know, Shannon Briggs, yeah, like, I mean, I'm sure you've been in a few fights and grew up in Brooklyn and, you know, so it's been a long time. I'm sure that he's had to feel a, a punch in the face with no glove. It's a little different. It's a little different. Not only that, but throwing punches. I mean, you got to think, he's been punching stuff for 48 years or however long he started. Let's say 38 because he probably started when he was like 10. 38 years, just punching shit. But he's been punching shit with fucking his hands wrapped and taped up and then gloves on top of that. Like, all right, man, let's see if your 48-year-old hands can can handle punching somebody in the head. Let's see how that feels, buddy. So I think there's a lot of unknowns when it comes to people like that. And, and uh, you know, me personally, like, in terms of legacy for this sport and what it really means to myself, uh and to also like the hardcore fans that are actually really fans of the sport, they know that the fight that matters the most would be myself and Mark Godbeer because we're both champs of our respected organization. But as far as like the money fight and, and the amount of exposure, obviously that's a no brainer. That's Shannon Briggs all day. But like I said, man, no, none of us have, <laughs> none of us are getting any kind of fights anytime soon. So I'm just going to sit back and just keep working and keep training. And then when they, uh, when they let us off of a restriction, then we'll see who lines up. I, I tell you what, man, I, um, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I, this is, uh, you know, I, I said it a month ago, I'll say it now. This is the fight. I think you and Mark, man, with, uh, it's just in terms of, you know, again, the lineage and the historical nature of it and just you two in general, Again, even if there were no titles on the line, it's a fucking, it's a hell of a fight. And then with all that lineage behind it, I think it just, I can't wait, man. <laughs> I can't wait. I, and and it, it's, um, I feel like, um, you know, I, I feel like a little kid that's, you know, walking through maybe like a candy store and can't touch stuff because we have to wait, right? You have to be patient because of all this and have a, I mean, again, I know there's nothing set in stone, but like, is there any loose idea like June, July, August that maybe the that you know bare knuckle has gotten to you and said this is when we want to try to do it, or is there anything? Um, I just based it upon well, if they rescheduled the Kansas one for June, right? You know, I I would hope that we're we're in July. Okay. But once again, I mean that's just me just. Basin, they rescheduled can they rescheduled Kansas for June. Yeah. Yeah. So June, uh, we're next. Yeah. yeah. June 20th or something. Yeah. So June I think 20th. I would hope. That. And maybe if it's not with a crowd, at least like closed closed door shows. Like who knows, man? What what are these new rules gonna be? It's like, are we just never gonna be able to interact? I mean that Fauci guy says like you'll never be able to shake hands again. I'm like, come on, guy. Like that's crazy. I know, like, all right, whatever. He's just like I don't know. Part of me wants to believe back to Marcus Pierce that that guy is just it's like he's like a he's this is his time to shine. He's like he's pumped, you know. He's so excited. He's, he's so excited that he's so irrelevant right now. But I right. don't know. Maybe I'm just. But it's like for him to say some shit like that, we'll never shake hands again. Socialize, we'll never be the same again. Like I don't know. Maybe, maybe. But it's also too like the new normal. Like if you look, like people like ever since SARS, like. People in Asia, like, they just go out with masks. That's what they do. That's just normal. That's that's their new normal. Right. So maybe I can see something like that. Like, you know, we'll just always have to wear masks. I don't know, bro. It's it's still – I see people walking around the store and, you know, I – um, just people walking down the street with fucking masks on. It's, it's not – I feel like I'm in Twilight Zone, man. You know, I, I, I mean, I get it. I get it, right? But if this is going to be the new norm, I, I feel like I'm in Twilight Zone. I really do. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. Man. 
I don't know. I'm interested to see. I mean, it's like if Dana White can put on Fight Island, <laughs> maybe he'll sit there. But hey, did WrestleMania fucking happen? They were able to film WrestleMania. They, right. They found it to get it done. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I'd be it would be horrible to hear that some one of those guys got sick or whatever, but so far so so far so good. You know? Did you watch it? Uh I've watched some some of them after. I couldn't find a link. <laughs> I couldn't find a link. Well, I was go- I was going to say I I watched it, man, and uh, you know, I I think we've touched on this before too. Like I'm, um, you know, lifelong wrestling fan since I was like, I don't know, 10, 11, 12, probably before that. And, um, it was definitely different, you know, with, without the fans, it was, um, cause pro wrestling is a showman sport, right? So like this stuff is made, it's made for people to react to it, to kind of know that you're doing a good job or know that you're doing a bad job. Yeah. It's, it's, it's different. It really is. It's different. I think it gives people the opportunity to form their own opinions because how many times have you watched a match and, you know, the fans are going nuts and people just by default, they're like, oh, yeah, that was a great match simply because a million other people thought it was a great match. Vice versa, when everybody's doing the match. Yeah, how lackluster was Goldberg's match? Goldberg and Strom, like and, and Braun Strowman, without without a crowd, <laughs> it was like power slam, power slam, wait, spear, spear, power slam, power slam. That's the match. I'm like, that was it. All right. Well, okay. <laughs> without the crowd I, going nuts, it is so lame. In all reality, that's probably what it should have been anyway. I don't. If it would have been, if that match would have been any longer, I think it it would have been. It would have stunk up the joint more than what it did, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, you just know. to be perfectly it's honest. Like... But yeah, the brother, I tell you what, the Firefly, the Firefly Funhouse match is the best. <laughs> the the Bray Wyatt, the Bray Wyatt and John Cena match, or whatever they want to call it, the 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 show, because that wasn't even a really match. That was that was something else. That was awesome. It was like a 15, 20 minute long promo that had a pinfall at the end. That's all it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was hilarious. But I, I was, in, I was entertained. I thought, I thought it was great. Hey, you know what though? A lot of people are, you know, shit on that match. But like, um, the part where Cena came out and they had the WCW old Nitro backdrop and he came out the NWO music. I thought that was pretty fucking cool. You know, I. I enjoyed it because I was a fan back then. I enjoyed him coming out the old Nitro set and the NWO music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved it, man. I enjoyed yeah, it. Dude, it was funny, man. Well, I tell you what, man. I um, I hope we get back to some form of normalcy sooner than later. I hope that we get an announcement sooner than later. I know yeah. we have to be, we have to be patient. Um, but uh, I tell you what, man. Stay safe. Keep doing what you're doing. And uh, we we definitely look forward to uh, look forward to that fight, you and Godbeer. I look yeah, yeah. So much, brother, so much. But uh, stay uh, safe, bro. man. We appreciate your time and uh, take care. Have a good one, man. See you guys. Bye bye. All right, man. Have a good. One.